Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you like making lots of money, this channel's for you. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up if you like this content, leave comments below if you guys have questions. So today I'm gonna talk about gold prices and what moves gold prices. I'm gonna show you. So let's dig into this presentation and this is what moves gold prices. So ultimately what drives gold prices is real negative rates. Uh, gold goes up during an increasing real negative interest rate environment. I propose that housing starts is where inflation gets into the system through commercial banks loaning money into existence. 50% of commercial bank lending is residential real estate and the majority of money of the money supply comes from commercial bank lending. <clears throat> so uh, where this really ramps up and you'll see it in the charts is an expansion phase of real estate. <clears throat> so here is the real interest rates and gold prices. And whenever interest rates go negative, this is when gold prices start to, to flare up. <clears throat> and, it's, and it's when it starts to increase going down. And you can see that with the majority of these moves. Now, Real interest rates, I don't even think that the correlation is as good as housing starts, which is the next slide. Um, because I think there's a, an, an easier correlation here uh, to see. So I'm gonna go to the next, next slide here, which is the housing starts and gold prices. And the blue line, there's a lot going on here. The blue line is the average uh, demand per year, which is just under one and a half million homes per year. And that is the yearly demand for, for new housing. That is what we should be building per year on the new housing starts. Now this cycles back and forth above and below and the area under the curve and over the curve, however you wanna say it, uh, has to equal each other out over time. And what happens is when we go into an expansion phase and I've got these black lines drawn in here. This is an expansion phase. It started to go in the expansion phase somewhere in this era, like right here in this area. And you can tell there's a little bit of a delay and then, and then gold prices start to move. When it comes back down, gold prices wanna come back down. And then when it goes back up, gold prices wanna go back up, but it's just delayed a little bit. It's a little bit of a delay. Maybe it's a year or two, but a two, two year delay, two and a half year delay is what we see. We go to the right, let's see if this continues to happen. Here we go into an expansion phase above the blue line. This is the housing starts in an expansion phase and it delays about two, you know, two, two and a half years. And then it starts moving the gold price. And then it keeps going after it as well because it's got some momentum. And here we are, we're going flat here in this uh, area and we're going kind of sideways here. So two sideways areas. Now, what does the housing starts look real time? And we're going this again, this is the, the line going through here is the average demand. And we've got a whole bunch of area under the curve here. Now this, this housing starts up here, this was a bubble phase. And we also had, I'll call it a loan debacle. It was government backed loans. And those government backed loans all became foreclosures when the house prices went down. It caused a problem in the new housing start. So those foreclosures, competed with new homes, uh, the new home builders. And they didn't build many new homes for many years. And you can tell that by the housing starts here. This, this whole area is lower than all of this in history, if you look for how long it was too. And we, uh, we came into an underbuilt scenario in real estate. We are 4 million homes short. And that is why if you look at any of the real estate metrics, that prices are going up 15% year over year nationwide. We're at a two months worth of inventory. So the inventory is very short and very small. And then we have days on the market that is short as well, which is, it, it continues to compress inventory and the days on the market continue to, to compress as well. And this is the reason why, is because we don't have enough homes. They didn't build enough new homes. And we're just starting to go into an expansion phase. And every time we go into an expansion phase, gold eventually will, uh, it, it lags it by a year or two, but gold will uh, account for the money supply that 
the money supply gets increased in an expansionary phase of real estate. So I've got the M2 money supply in the black line, and then I've got the, the inflation is the red graph. And you can tell that the M2 money supply goes up first and then inflation comes afterwards. And there's this lag. What I'm saying is the driver of the inflation, this M2 money supply, you can tell it was 1970. It went up, came back down in 75, it, it was a low. Now, if you look at the housing starts, <laughs> it went up, it came back down, 75 is the low, and we came back up, it peaked 77. 77, it peaked. Oh, wow, it even had this little dip in there, just like this. So the M2 money supply, what I propose is nothing more than the housing starts. And the housing starts is the, the indicator, uh, the leading indicator of the M2 money supply going up. For the most part in history. Now, and why I say it for the most part, is because this ridiculous move on the right-hand side over here, I, that's them creating a bunch of money. So I don't know what the heck that's going to do uh, to prices, but it's probably going to it's probably going to push precious metals through the roof and inflation and commodities. But I just wanted to show you this 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 lag here. So M two money supply basically is nothing more than the real estate cycle. Uh, we can see that it peaked in here's an 01. It started coming up and it was coming up here as well from 01 to 2006. And remember, there's a little bit of a delay factor too. So this is kind of the momentum. This is the momentum coming in and then usually the inflation's a little bit behind it. That's what we've got here. They probably printed some money on top of, uh, on top of some of these as well, like this crisis. They printed a bunch of money and now it's just, they're just going berserk. So there's, there's money printing going on with QE and all this other stuff in this M2 money supply. So uh, I, I do think inflation will eventually kick up here. And I don't know if it's going to follow it at this amount, uh, but it is delayed and we are going into an expansion phase of real estate. That's typically where the money comes into the system. So gold just lags this a little bit. It does follow this red inflation line very well. Uh, and when, when, I, when I talk about <clears throat> real negative rates, uh, typically what happens is the housing starts go up, they go into an expansionary phase, we get the inflation. That inflation starts to move up, which then put, it, it puts pressure on bonds because you have a real negative yield. So the, in, the inflation goes up, it goes into a real negative interest rate environment. The people who own treasury bonds sell treasury bonds, which then forces those interest rates higher. So when I say interest rates chase inflation, it's because inflation comes from the real estate market. It goes up, interest rates, and bonds get sold off, where, which raises interest rates because of the real negative rates. And, uh, and as inflation goes up and up and up from real estate, the interest rates will chase it higher. This all spurs or sparks money rotation in assets around the world. So you could say that United States real estate sets the conditions for the rotation of money worldwide because <clears throat> we're the dominant uh, currency. So real estate is where we need to be looking because that is where the inflation comes from. Inflation sets interest rates. Interest rates spurs the rotation of money and the market conditions. If you guys like this content, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. If you disagree with what I just came up with, put it in the comment section. Or if you agree, uh, that's what I see in history. That's how I'm correlating it. And that's what I think sets the market conditions is the real estate market or cycle. And that cycle dictates where we should be putting our money. If it's inflationary, highly inflationary in an, an expansion phase, it's commodities. If it's in a re recovery phase of real estate, we want to be in stocks. And if it's in a recession, we want to be in bonds. Thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.